Hey guys, what is up? It's Giovanni. Welcome to this lesson. I'm so excited to share this lesson with you because we're going to be talking about how to have real conversations with women and how to get to that social hook point. So you make real friends, attract real cute girls and get solid numbers so that you can start moving the interaction forward and start getting results in your dating life. Before I give you my attraction formula, let me talk about why 99% of the dating advice out there don't work for Asian guys. Most of the dating advice out there are from coaches who aren't Asian. And because of this, they don't do with the real problem that Asian guys like us have. Number one, the biggest problem when you talk to a girl who looks different than you is that our brains are hardwired when we see someone from a foreign tribe, from a different culture, immediately to have a fight or flight response. Now, when you combine that with a negative stereotype, reason number two, you know, Asian guys are stereotyped as what? Shorter, smaller, you know, packing down there, timid, shy, not sexual at all, right? So combine that with a negative stereotype, then you've got the fight or flight response. And then secondly, a negative, ugh, you know, he's probably not going to be cool. So all this manifests itself in what we call the unconscious social bias. Have you ever gone up to a girl, maybe an Asian girl or non-Asian girl, and as you're talking to her, you can kind of tell she has no interest in talking to you. Or like it feels like this invisible wall you can get past. It's like, I'm so cool though. I'm so accomplished. Why can't I get that across? Why is she not understanding that I'm a cool guy? That feeling drove me crazy for so many years. You know, I graduated from a good school. I got a great job at Google and I was still not getting the dating results that I wanted, you know, and it was so frustrating. And I didn't realize at the time that I was reaching this point where I was hitting this wall called unconscious social bias. And so I couldn't solve that problem at the time. And here's the fourth reason, the Asian attraction ratio. Every culture, every country has a certain population. And within that population, there's the girls who prefer Asian guys, like the top 10%. Then there's 70 to 90% of girls who wouldn't mind dating an Asian guy if you can convince her of to bypass some of these hardwired responses. And then you have like 20 to 30%, depending on which part of the country you are and you know whether or not these girls, no matter what you do, will not date you. So your goal really is to avoid these girls to game as much as possible as the girls in the middle and to find girls who prefer guys like you. So given these four barriers, right? The fifth barrier is really, if you look at the social hierarchy, because let's face it, we exist in a social hierarchy of some kind. Anytime humans get to a certain size, a hierarchy naturally starts to form. It happens in the animal kingdom as well. It's just how we are biologically. So within the hierarchy, right, you have to figure out a way to close that gap of all the four things I talked about. Fight or flight response, negative stereotypes, unconscious social bias, and the Asian attraction ratio, and the gap between the hierarchy because of these reasons of the perceived value in the sexual marketplace. Let's bring it back a little bit, right? When I was starting out, this is a picture of me in college, right? Now I'm looking at guys, you know, some of these white guys are really cool, but even a regular dude, right, was out competing me. Like a regular white guy can go to a bar, you know, have fun with a few friends, if he has a good attitude, he's like, hey guys, what's up? Like if he does that like two, three weeks in a row, he can get a girlfriend. But as hard as I tried, I could not for the life of me even get one girl to like me back. So that's where I started. And over the next seven years, I slowly but meticulously cracked the code. What I'm about to share with you, I've done for over 15 years. I've coached hundreds of Asian clients one-on-one -on, -one on how to do this. They work worldwide. I have clients from LA to Taiwan, South Africa to Australia, Europe to South Americas, anywhere you can think of. Doesn't matter if they're not non-Asian girls or Asian girls. In fact, they will work better with Asian girls because Asian girls are not expecting this level of game. But it works too if you want to date outside of your culture. This is the entire attraction cycle that I came up with. And each one of them, I can spend three hours talking about. But for now, you can actually get the step-by-step -step breakdowns for this in my course, Dating Without Borders. Just go to datingwithoutborders.net or click the link in the banner and it'll take you there. For today, I'm going to simplify this whole model into five steps. This is called the five hook points of dating. In every conversation, there's a point where we call the social hook point where the girl's like, okay, I don't know this guy, but I'm interested enough to keep talking to him. Then there's a sexual hook point. And that sexual hook point is not the same as men. Men are like light switches, on off. Women are more like slow dials, okay? So the first sexual hook point is she's thinking, I'm open to the possibility of eventually someday hooking up with him. Then you have the third hook point, which is the third sexual hook point. And you can reach this in one hour the same night if you know what to do. This hook point is like, wow, I'm really horny. I like this guy. I'm down to hook up with him. The fourth hook point is I like him so much. I'm open to having a relationship with him. And then the fifth hook point is I'm starting to fall in love with him. I see myself falling for this guy. When you can reach these hook points sequentially consistently, that's how you create massive abundance in your dating life. Because you know how to take her through her attraction cycle, not yours, her attraction cycle. Why am I talking about this so conceptually? We're going to get into tacticals. The reason is that oh, the war is won before the first shot is fired, right? Like I want you to have the right conceptual understanding of macro 
micro dating economics. And then when you have that, you can really zone in and fine tune your tactics. So the solution to all of these problems, right, is what I call the cultural convergence framework. It's a framework that I developed from trying to get girls that had a higher perceived social value compared to on the average spectrum compared to me, where I was at. And I bridged, I was able to close this gap and finally be able to win the game. Some of you might have heard this, right? This guy has the gift of gab, you know? This guy is, has charismatic conversations, verbal jujitsu, right? In the Eastern culture, we call it like Zen flow, like when you're flowing and everything just comes out so naturally. So how do you achieve that if you're more of a nerd like me and you didn't learn that growing up? I basically broke it down into different steps. And the more you practice these steps, the more natural it feels. As Bruce Lee once said, you can be unnaturally natural or naturally unnatural. But there's a process for everything. So there's the open, the transition, the premise, story, and banter. Now you guys might have seen this in other dating courses or from other dating coaches, but I've customized these steps specifically for Asian guys. Here are some of them you can use right now. My best line to use when there's a clear value differential, or if I'm going to, let's say a modeling event and I, I'm not used to that world, is this. I know we look like two completely different people, but wouldn't it be interesting if we talked for five minutes. Now this line, it works because you're bringing to her conscious awareness that unconscious social bias that, that a lot of women have when they're talking to a guy from a different culture. And guess what? You're putting a little bit of pressure on her saying, we are different, but what if we connected? And if she says no to that and there are other people around, it looks really bad on her, right? For not giving you a try. So this is a very powerful, what we call framing opener. Another opener I use for guys that are just starting out that a little bit harder cases, socially awkward like I was, is believe it or not, I'm an introvert. So it's a little harder for us, but I would open with something. You looked interesting and I wanted to meet you or we look like two different people. Wouldn't be interesting if we talked for five minutes. And then I'll say, it's my self-development goal to make two new friends and I'm just talking to different people, right? This is what we also know as a transition, AKA premise. It's that you're providing a reason for why you're talking to her. The reason that you provide a reason is because your nonverbal attractive signals are not strong enough yet in the beginning. So you have to provide that premise. If your nonverbal attraction is strong enough, their attraction is automatic. But when you're starting out, it's better to befriend girls that you like because you get a, a lot of intel as to where they hang out, how they think, and what type of triggers they actually respond to when they're talking to men. Another one of my openers is what we call challenge frame. You looked interesting. Are you? A really great transition is you'll never guess where I'm from, right? And I'll say, she'll be like, where? I'm like, well, I heard American girls, you know, geography classes is okay. Not that great. I'll give you a hint. It's an island. I'll give you another hint. It starts with a T. Okay. And the girl's like, Thailand. I'm like, no, you dork. Thailand's not an island. <laughs> Okay, so I'm from Taiwan and that's a role that you can play as well because you're different than her, you see? Not, no other guy can use that. At this point, if you're seeing my calibrate and if I'm seeing a lot of like negative reactions or she's not really responding with a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of times guys are like, well, Giovanni, what do I say now? I can tell you that 90% of the time, it's your nonverbals, right? So it's not what you're saying, it's how you're saying it and your body language facial expression and your communication that's preventing that interaction from moving forward. So if you need help with that, the weekly coaching sessions that we do will really help you resolve those sticking points. Then I got kind of confident and then I would go to stores and I would game like girls I worked at like really high end stores, right? And I'd be like, she's like, how can I help you? I'm like, I'm just here to uh, make an impact today. What's up? <laughs> so I became super cocky and I tried that frame for a while and it does work because they don't expect that from an Asian guy like me. You can go the more complimentary route, especially if you're in college where the girls are still young, you're not out in the real world in the club scene and this is a great line it's you look cute and i wanted to find out if you're interesting so you're paying her a small compliment then you're challenging her saying you know are you interesting as well in addition to being cute a lot of guys get stuck with this pattern so what do you do where are you from oh cool you're hairdresser becky so like uh where do you cut hair oh cool so like um do you like work on weekends oh cool so like do you cut men's hair or women's hair oh okay so like how much is a haircut cool so like i guess i can come in like you know maybe in two weeks like next weekend would that be cool with you right the conversation is boring it's what we call interview style questions it's just draining right and most non-asian guys even do that but they get away with it because they're not a minority with a negative stereotype but for us like we got to be better than that bro so there are two things i do one is a cold read a cold read requires some experience right as you go out more and more you'll gain like certain patterns of certain girls and their likely storyline for example at this point i can guess the storyline of most asian girls that i meet a cold read would be like you look like you work in marketing or you look like you're a girl who is really good at moving her body no <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Get your mind out of the gutter. I'm talking about, you know, you're probably a dancer or you meditate or you do yoga, okay? So that's a cold read. It takes a conversation off the opener into something interesting that she might relate to. If you can't do cold reads that well, especially if you're starting out, what I do is what we call a story lead. So a story is like, so I'm new to LA and I've been looking at really great tea shops. I'm just wondering, you look like someone that might know something about that. Or what are two places you would visit if you're new in town? 
that you absolutely have to go. What are your recommendations? So that gets the story going. You either join her conversation, right? Cold read, what she's thinking in her head, or you pull her into your story. And your ability to tell stories, which we go through in our coaching, is gonna give you a grounding sequence that's so powerful that people are just naturally drawn to it because it touches all of the universal emotions and takes them through that roller coaster of that emotional high and low, right? I'll give an example of my grounding story. Where are you from, Giovanni? Well, my dad was a diplomat, so I'm like a citizen of the world. I'm from everywhere. But if you really want to know, I can break it down. But for now, I'm here with you. Originally, I'm from Taiwan. Wow, that's cool. Like, so you've lived everywhere? What's your favorite place to live? That's a very com that's the most common question I get. What's your favorite place to live? And I'll say, well, Africa, uh, Malawi. It's where Madonna adopted her one of her kids. <laughs> And you know, we had no movie theater, no malls. It was literally like a huge backyard with my, our dogs, the chicken and the ducks. And we were so happy because we were so undistracted, unfiltered by these like dopamine addictions, you know? And all we did was play with our animals and play basketball and hang out with the kids. It was an amazing, amazing two years of my life. Wow, that is so cool. I can't even imagine that. I'm like, yeah, what about you? What was it like growing up with two sisters, you know, in Chicago, like for example? So now I'm getting into this real conversation. I pulled her into my reality. I gave her a dose of my reality and then I'm like on to the next, right? So now you're having like a real conversation with someone that you might be attracted to or you can befriend and eventually you'll meet her cute friends. Make sense? Is this getting through to you? The power of having these authentic conversations, the power of using your stereotype, the fact that you're foreign, the fact that you're different than her into conversation topics that create attraction and connection. This is so powerful. And guess what? Other guys can't use this because they're not foreign like you. I'll give you some other quick tips for conversation pieces that hook. One really good line is, have you ever had that feeling of, right? Because you're trying to get to that universal emotion. You know, when I was in school, have you ever had that feeling like you want to try really hard, but you don't know if you'll get the result? Everybody's had that emotion. Have you ever been in a situation where you were like leaving this place and you didn't want to make any more friends? But then you realize like life happens wherever you are. So I want to make the best of my two months here, you know, and I wanted to make some new friends. Wow, cool. This guy, you know, he's got a vision. He feels so authentic. I, I feel his light, right? I want to, I'm pulled towards him. I have some banter lines, you know, I have to get an A. I'm Asian. Otherwise my dad beats me. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of a dark joke. So you're not ugly, right? It's the opposite of you're cute. Again, they're not expecting the Asian guy to banter like that. Slow down, I'm a guy, I need to rest. Or slow down, I'm Asian, I need to, I need to rest. You need to like buy me a drink first, okay? So you can, you're using that negative stereotype and role reversing it to your advantage. How do I look, right? It's like, oh, I'm Asian, you gotta add 10 or add seven more years. Like, no way, you're in your 30s? Oh my God. So there's a little things you can play with based on your stereotype. Yeah, like, you know, I'm a vampire. So if we end up dating, which I'm not saying I want to, but if we did, you would have me like this for the next 25 years. How cool is that? Show off to all your friends how young your husband looks. Actually, they would think that you're a cougar <laughs> and I'm probably a gold digger. All right, so these are conversation pieces that you can use right now. And you can use them in your online messaging as well. Okay, it's super powerful. Hinge and Bumble have voice notes now. You can leave them as voice notes and you can do this in person as well. Some quick wins for Asian guys that these are very common advice that I give to my one-on-one -on -one clients that just happen over and over again. Number one is get a fitted leather jacket because most Asian guys lack dominance. And so we want to express that dominance as it's done in a Western society by adhering to a sexual stereotype that's already attractive. So get a fitted leather jacket, take some pictures with it, put it on your online dating profile, and I guarantee you, your results will increase. Hire a photographer that does what we call three-quarter body shots in the modeling world. So three-quarter body shots are exactly like the shot from your waist upward because those are the dating profiles best exemplify your face and your body, and they perform the best when you're looking 45 degrees off camera. You want to learn how to have these interesting lines that I just gave you. There's 33 more that are completely free check the link in my profile or on the banner and just download them for free okay all of these resources are available if you go to the about section in the facebook group you'll see link.highintegrityskills.com and you can get all these resources completely free when the perceived value differential is high i use the opener i know we look like two different people but it wouldn't be interesting if we talk for just five minutes okay when the perceived value is pretty close i would say you looked interesting are you because then there's not much of a value difference i have to i have to close the gap on if I'm trying to make friends outside of my culture, I would say it's my self-development goal to meet people that I wouldn't normally meet so I can learn more about the world. Okay, this is a very powerful exploratory line and it allows you to make friends outside of your immediate circle, immediate culture. The banter lines I gave you previously are gonna help you snap out of that logical mind. A lot of Asian guys are very logical in the conversation. And one of the first things we do in our training is learn how to have emotional conversations, non-logical conversations. And the banter lines that I gave you will help you do that. If you have any questions on these, DM me directly at 
hit this link m.me slash giovanni one coach and i'm happy to to help you i'll give you some tips for free and guide you to the right resource if it's from us at high integrity skills or some youtube video or another coach even i, I want what's best for you and i want to help you get past this barrier that was so hard for me for so many years i just want you to succeed and be able to serve you now this is a little bit more advanced but every part of the cycle right like for for non-asian guys for the majority guys it's attraction that's it but i figured out for us we need attraction comfort and connection everything goes down back as my mentor said back to snr value survival or replication attraction increases your replication perceived value comfort and connection increases your survival value so a woman's looking at your behavior pattern and your looks for replication value right like can i sleep with a guy with the best genes right then comfort and connection is once i sleep with him can he protect me is he going to be a leader of the tribe so those are comfort and connection triggers that exhibit your behavior this is going to like the core of attraction theory and how our brains are wired based on evolution and here's a picture right like once you figure this out it's like i can go on the street anytime here on the left and just talk to anybody i can have models visit me just when i'm hanging out at home i can literally talk to anybody at any time it's super super freeing like not a day goes back where i'm not thankful that i took the time to learn this properly and now you can learn it in a fraction of the time that it took me so what do you do now well watch the next lesson because i go into social circle building yeah me directly for a link i have a free resource with a hundred lines that help you start the conversation banter make her feel connected to you and get solid numbers and get into amazing first dates if you're thinking like will this work for me i'm different because x y and z human beings are different but we're not snowflakes there are universal patterns of behavior that every guy every girl has right that's hardwired and once you can read these patterns right i used to be a kid who i would it'd be very very slow for me to get like certain lessons but once i saw it i could see the patterns more prominently than most people so once you see these patterns that i'm going to show you you'll be able to get the result that you want my clients range from college students to you know professional ceos in their 50s so this works no matter where you are in life. Doesn't matter how much money you have. Doesn't matter how you look. If you want to fast track your progress and just get step-by-step -step help from secrets like how to find where these girls that like Asian guys are hanging out online and offline. How to talk to a girl in a real way and get her hooked, right? Get to that social hook point. How to get girls actually swiping right on you. How to get a solid number. How to text her. How to message her in a way that's attractive that gets her chasing you. How to set up proper first dates so you're actually excited to go on that date. How to continue second and third dates properly so that you escalate smoothly and correctly. How to get her chasing you, asking you if she's your girlfriend. And if you want, how to manage multiple relationships honestly or find that perfect girl that you didn't have to settle for. We do all of this in a small mastermind every week where we go through everyone's challenge points. And you're going to learn so much from these other guys that are on the same path. So if you're interested in help like this, I have some spots that are available. Just DM me and ask me any questions you have about that. Don't worry, the price is super affordable. Other coaches are charging $5,000, $10,000. I'm not about that. I'm here to offer you practical advice affordably within reason and to get you the result as quickly as possible. I want my clients to not stay my clients. I want my clients to refer other clients to me because they got the result that they wanted. Yeah. So once you have this handled, right, freedom anytime, anywhere. Here's an example of some of the girls we met that weekend uh, just walking around town and they ended up coming over to cook lasagna for us. How cool is that? So before I go, please DM me if you have any questions, if you're interested in training with me. Here is the link and I hope I can serve you. And even if you don't train with me, you just want to stay in this group and learn as much as you can. That's cool too. But I highly, highly encourage you to post an introduction. Tell us your name, where you're from, what you like from this group and currently what you're struggling with. Okay, because what you like and what you're struggling with, that's the gap. And if you let us know what the gap is for you, I can provide the right resources for you to bridge that gap and get to that next level. I hope you found this video useful. I'll see you in the next lesson.